Well, this one has a thing where it'll tell you it wants to re-optimize. Mm -hmm. But if you yeah. don't want to, fine, it'll let you keep taking measurements. Only you'll be taking the same, it'll just record the last good measurement over and over and over really? again. Because I found out one night reducing data that, oh, oh you know, I have half of the line and the other half is the same scan. Mm -hmm. So if it says it wants to re-optimize, take it seriously. Oh, okay. And another little trick to keep it from wanting to re-optimize constantly, when you're walking along, I always, I may always do an incident, then a reflected, then walk with it facing down. Because if you walk with it facing up, that flat surface might turn to the sun, and that'll kick the reading way up. And then it'll say, whoa, you're out of range. You know, I've got to you know, do it again. And at the same token, you don't want to get it too dark, because it'll say, hey, it's too dark. I'm going to re-optimize. Uh, now, there's another little feature that's worth mentioning, and that's if you look at this detector here. Here's the fiber optic probe that goes into the instrument. And there's this nice, flat white, white surface. Now the purpose for that is to diffuse the sunlight because what we want to measure is a quantity called a radiance, which is the amount of sunlight integrated over the entire hemisphere. And that's what this does. It's a cosine collector. It, in, it integrates the light you know, with a cosine weighting. And so when we get that difference in the ratio between the incident and the reflected, that we can use that to determine the albedo. Now there's one other thing that's pretty important to remember. So, so far it's really been pretty simple, but you need to somehow characterize the surface. And that characterization depends on what the surface is. For this case, what we have is drained ice. And so what we'll do is we always try to take a picture of the surface. Because again, we're looking in the optical regime. It's visible in near infrared light. And to some extent, what you see is what you get. So a picture really tells us a lot about the surface. So we'll do that. If there was snow on the surface, we'd measure the snow depth. If there's a melt pond, we'd also measure the pond depth. So this is the albedo line we set up at this site. You can see here's the zero meter pole. And if you look down, you can see another one at 100 meters and way out there one at 200 meters. And what we've been doing is measuring the albedos along here every day. And again, we can see the spatial variability of albedo. And we can also look at the temporal evolution. In fact, when we were out here yesterday, this entire line was underwater. And what's happened in between is there's been some drainage of the ice, and so the meltwater level has decreased. And all we do is go along this line, and again, using the same techniques, get the instrument level, measure the incident, flip it over, and measure the reflected get the albedo, then what we'll do is we'll walk down. Five meters. And just repeat the, the measurements. So you do that all the way down the line. You wind up making 41 different measurements of albedo. This is really... in waves and laughing over the top of the <laughs> And you realize if you slip, and I fall in laughing. Oh, is that 95? That was just 95, right? Sorry? That was 95 meters? Yeah. Um, 95. Yeah. Did you not, are you recording yep. what distance? Yeah, we can see your holes there. I think. Oh, I See, this makes my point that the hardest thing is to remember where you are. Because it really is kind of... Yeah. Are the new machines uh, not that Good. heavy? Uh, no, actually, the backpack I had is yeah. their new yeah. backpack. The old one was a lot heavier. Okay. The machine is pretty much the same. Uh, what they've done is improved it, made it a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think one of the big improvements was to get rid of some of the cables. 
so now it's all yeah. and this little oh. remote thermometer. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to lay these out over here and then just point it and press the measure button. Okay. And uh, so we'll put it down, measure it, measure both of them. Uh, yeah, right at it. 33 or 0 Exactly. Ago. Yep. And now it's saying 70 foot, yeah, 72. No, 72. Seven, 72 degrees per. Sorry, the first one I said zero because it says zero, 72, and then I kind of looked at the. Yeah. And one of the things that Tayo uh, and I are looking at are the evolution of these melt ponds. Uh, and why is it that some years you'll just get a sheet of water on everything, and other years you won't? And some years you'll just get little isolated melt ponds. Um, and we're not exactly sure, but I uh, believe it's important because for the past, well, if you look at this in an IPY context, okay, the last IPY in 1957, there were a number of ice stations all out there making measurements. And since then, we've made a lot of measurements of perennial ice. Uh, and we've really improved our understanding of perennial ice just in time for most of it to go away. Uh, so each year there's a little bit less perennial ice and a little bit more of the seasonal ice. And so our effort is to really begin to start to understand what's going on with the seasonal ice. Uh, 